keynote speaker, Paula Egger. And I'm not going to read her entire bio again. Um, she's an extraordinary woman. She is um, the Chief Diversity Officer and Admission Specialist in the Office of Diversity and Inclusion in New York Law School. And when I was doing research um, to find out people who had high positions in diversity um, in different law schools, she was the first person that I had seen. I don't know, are you the very first in the country who's a Chief Diversity Officer at a law school? So she's in a groundbreaking position, and so it's a I haven't seen anyone who was a chief diversity officer at any law school. So um, when I when I read about her and all that she had achieved in her position, um, I immediately contacted her and I wanted her to come and share with you, especially at this inaugural event. And she was awesome, and she agreed to do it. And her she 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 wanted to be a part of it and speak with you. So. Um, I'll go ahead and let her tell you a little bit more about, uh, about, about herself and the work that she does and the challenges of diversity in American legal education and some of the initiatives and things that she's doing at New York Law School. First, I want to thank Evangeline for putting together this wonderful conference with all the resources. how much you know about what resources there are out there for um, pre-law students and students of color, but there's not a lot, and so the fact that you are all in this room means to me that you're hustlers. And I'm gonna get to that in a minute, but I mean, it really is important for you to continue with this as something that's pushing you. So let me get to my actual speech before I look at me. Okay, so I was excited to be asked to speak to be the, key, to be the closing keynote speaker today because there's a lot of things that I wanna say to you. I want to, talk to you about the things that you need to know. So you've heard a lot of stats, right? Right, and stats aren't necessarily the ones that you're like, mm, this is great, I'm gonna do this. The stats can be a little bit, right? Um, I don't wanna talk to you about stats. Um, I know you've heard about what the law can be do for you and what you need to do to be a, a great applicant. I don't wanna talk to you about that either, okay? She's like, what do you wanna talk about then? I wanna talk to you about what is your why? What is your why? Your why, what does that mean? So why are you here at this conference? Why are you considering law school? What will drive you once you get to school and it starts to get challenging? So for one of my students, it was seeing her mother or her father be put into jail for beating her mother. That was her why. For another one of my students, it was the feeling of helplessness he had as a victim of a hate crime. That was his why. What's your why? For one of my best friends, it was knowing that law school would get, allow her to become an advocate for herself and for her community. That was her why. For you, it may be the lawyer you saw on TV. For me, yeah, everybody knows, right? Um, Claire Huxtable, everybody? everybody? No? Okay. Um, that may be who you saw and decided that she, I'm, you're inspired, that's your why. Or maybe it's Michelle Obama, right, right the street? Or Nelson Mandela's legacy. What is your why? Something that made you mad, glad, or sad in your interaction with the law or a lawyer is what's probably driving you to decide what you want to be and that you want to think about a career in the law. I think that it's important when you tell a story, when you're a speaker, that you connect with people about your personal story so they understand what your personal why is. So <clears throat> I'm going to tell you about my why. My why is my mother. My mother's name was Joan Griffith, um, and she was in the trade, World Trade Center in 1993 when it was bombed for the first time. Um, I was in boarding school in Massachusetts. Speaking of diversity, there was none there. Um, I was the only. Um, and I found out when I was in the middle of class, they came and said to me, we think that your mother um, works in the World Trade Center, right? And I said, yes, and they said, you need to come with us. Um, that was back before there were cell phones, right? You couldn't text, you couldn't find out. There was, CNN was only on the television, the internet wasn't really down like how it is now. Couldn't tweet about it to find out. Uh, so I had to wait till I think it was 11 o'clock that evening to find out that my mother was okay. That she had walked down 97 flights of stairs in order to get home and she hurt her back, but she was fine. 
That was when I was 16. When I was 24, my mother was killed in the World Trade Center in September 11. Um, that's my why. Everything that I do, everything that I do is in her honor and with her spirit moving me. So I want you to always connect. What is the reason why you're doing what you're doing? Right? Because it gets to be easy to bear off when you forget about what the why is. Right? So the first real lawyers I'd ever interacted with were the lawyers who I interacted with because of 9-11. They said, you should go to law school. And I was like, oh, maybe I should go to law school. Right? But, you know, we all have angels. And my mother is my why. So I wanted to just have you connect with that. So I'll give you a little bit of context when I'm telling you what you need to know now. So here I'm going to put on my Auntie Paula hat. Okay? So Auntie Paula's about to tell you a couple things. So I was thinking about what do you need to know, right, in order to be successful? What do you need to know in order to take off? And I thought about what, what would I have liked to know when I was going to go to law school? And what do I always have to tell my law students now? So I came up with a list of 10 things. Um, it could easily have been 50. But I know you guys have places to go tonight. Um, so, um, so I am going to tell you 10. The first thing on my list is set clear goals and hustle. What does success mean to you? What is your roadmap? So after knowing what your why is, the easiest way to set your goals is to start by beginning with the end in mind. Do you already see yourself walking across the stage graduating law school? Right? Connect to that so that when it's real hard and you're like, damn, what was I doing? You see that. You see that goal. It's in grasp because it's, it's there for you, right? And I can see myself walking across that stage. It's not abstract. There's your why. Okay? So you may be thinking, yo, Paula, I don't know what you're talking about, whatever. Um, I don't even know what kind of law I want to practice when you're talking about set a goal. Right? Um, start with this. Start with, I want to be in the top 10% of my class. And I want to apply for law review. But, you know, it's, it's a big thing, but it's a little thing, right? It's not, I want to be X, Y, Z for the rest of my life. It's something tangible that you can think about right now, okay? Um, or, I want to be the first LGBT president of my bar association. Also, something tangible. These clear and defined goals are the first steps towards your success. But that being said, also know that you can say, this is what I'm going to do, and you think it's going to be a straight line, but really life is like this, right? It's not like this. I wish it was like this, because it makes it like a lot easier, right? But it's like this, right? Okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, so the second thing I want to say to you is be humble. Internalize that. Can you say it with me? Be humble. Be humble. The reason I want to say this to you is because I meet a lot of law students. I love my law students, but some of y'all are a bit much. <laughs> it's, it's true, you know? So think about this. What, when you, um, let me see, when you valedictorian of your high school, were you taking all AP classes when you were in school? Were you a top performer at your college? Were you a, singer, a professional singer? Anything that you can think of that you might have done that you think, oh, I'm the bomb because of this, guess what? Other people in law school have done that too, hmm. right? So when you get there, it kind of takes you down a notch because you're not all that you were when you were an undergrad. Everybody else has done something wonderful, and that's why they're there as your colleagues, okay? So remember, you still have something to bring to the table, but you also have a lot to learn, a lot to learn. So that being said, Remember, the most intelligent people ask the most questions, and those who want to seem intelligent provide the most answers. Okay? Another quote is genius is being able to remain quiet while others demonstrate their ignorance. So, for those of you who are lawyers and you remember the person in law school who was like, I want to piggyback on that. No, shut up. <laughs> anyway, um, okay. Number three, know that you stand on the shoulders of those who came before you. Think about that. I'm literally just now, the person who was just at this podium just now, pioneer. We have big shoes to fill, and we should be humbled by the fact that those shoes are there. They have, I mean, these walk the path. 
Think about who came before you. And remember that this is not about just you. It's about the people who came before you, and it's about the people who are going to come after you. Okay? So remember that you're representing your family, your culture, your community, your heritage with your, with your actions. So take pride in your journey and making others proud. Be worthy of your heritage. Number four, do not get too comfortable. Say it with me, I will not get too comfortable, Paula. Did Kobe Bryant step, slow down in the fourth quarter against the Raptors in 2006? No, he uh, finished the game with 81 points. He wasn't comfortable. He was like, oh really? One more, right? Okay, does Prince stop making music? No, thank God he does not, I love him so much. Um, does Beyonce stop now that she has a ring on it? Right, okay, all right. So you graduate in the top 10% of your, well you, you have the top 10% grades in your first semester of law school. Great, fantastic, congratulations but you have five or more, more semesters to go. Don't get comfortable, you got work to do, okay? Past performance is not an indicator of future results. So always be ready for new challenges and opportunities. Earl Nightingale once said that success is the progressive realization of a worthy idea. The key word there is progressive, as if you are always moving forward. So keep moving forward and don't look back. It slows you down. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. I mean, I'm uncomfortable right now. Well, not really, I'm really Put the microphone in my hand. I'm, anyway, okay. Uh, but, but really, think about this. There's always a little bit of something there when you're trying something new. You don't feel quite right. Fake it till you make it. Okay? Do not let the haters and the naysayers bear you off your path. That's number five. How many of you have a hater? Every hand in the room should be raised, and if you don't know who they are, they exist. Yeah. Don't let them bury you off your path. Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor says, I do know one thing about me. I don't measure myself by others' expectations or let, my, or let others define my worth. Can you imagine if she was like, oh, there are haters out here, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna be a judge. Right? She's the first Latina on the Supreme Court. That's huge. So, I want you to remember the compliments and forget the insults. And no matter what, you are playing your game, not the game that others have planned for you. Take control and define your own success. Do not allow others to yourself to be defined by what other people's stereotypes and standards are for you. Number six, we're getting there. Be self-reflective. How many of you think about how you can be better? How can you be better, right? Same thing with Beyonce, like no one, she wasn't trying to not do sit-ups when she had, okay. Um, I read a quote once, uh, that was pulled from a letter that Jackson Pollock's father wrote for him, where his father said, the secret of success is to be fully awake to everything about you. That, that really kind of, do you, other than looking in the mirror, right? Other than thinking, you have to say to yourself, am I the best me that I can be, right? What else can I do to be better? Don't get comfortable, like I said, okay? So, the more you know about yourself, the more you can make every aspect of yourself better. Because you will see where you can improve and where you can then share those gifts with others. Okay, number seven, we'll get to it. Preparation. Are you prepared? Are you prepared? Okay. It's never too early to start getting prepared and solidifying those lawyering skills that you're going to need in order to be successful in law school. Why don't you write something? Why don't you read something? Okay? Programs such as Clio and others, they provide opportunities for you to be exposed to the type of work that you're going to need to excel as a law student. And there's a lot of other resources out there that can put you on the same playing field as everybody else. But you've got to do the work. So you have something that I didn't have when I was um, in school, or when I was an undergrad. And it's for part of it. You have this thing called Google. You know of it? Okay, so if there's something that you're interested in that's in, that in the world, you can just Google it and find out at least a baseline information about what that is, right? So do that. Say, what does it mean to be a successful attorney in Google? See what happens. Find out information. Don't get comfortable. Prepare. 
Number eight, stay motivated. You motivated? Do you feel ready? Do you feel like you got a lot of information today and yesterday? You're like, I'm ready. I'm ready, right? I get excited when you guys are excited. Know that you need to have, going back to this, your why. Right? That's going to help you stay motivated. But this is something that I do and I suggest that you do always. You need to have a constant reminder about your why. So, you know, I have a picture of my mom on my desk. I also have pictures of my children on my desk, right? In addition to that, don't laugh. I have a picture of Tony Robbins and Idris Elba on my desk. Um, <laughs> one for one obvious reason, the other one because of just Elba. But anyway, um, you should read self-development books, okay? You should read books that try to make you better, okay? For example, Sean Covey, Robert Kiyosaki, Napoleon Hill. You can read my future book, coming soon. Um, and you can watch inspiring videos. I don't know if any of you have heard of Eric Thomas. Do you know what Eric Thomas is? Anybody read? Come on, can you not? If you don't know what Eric Thomas is, feel free to Google him right after this. He has a uh, video called How Bad Do You Want It? And every time I look at this video, I'm like, I can do anything. Because it's inspiring. So if you need something to say, and I can't be there for you all the time, think of, press play on that Google video, and then you can see he is telling you, you got to want it, okay? There are going to be people who try to bear you off of that path. You have to connect to how much you want it, okay? So, you motivate. It's funny because I have a line here and I'm reading it and I'm like, I can't read that. It says run a few miles every day. Psh, sorry. <laughs> I got to be real. Um, anyway, walk vigorously. How about that? Um, okay, get a mentor. How many of you have a mentor? So it's not too late, and I'm still collecting mentors now, right? Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall, another innovator, another pioneer, says, none of us can get where we are solely by putting ourselves up by our, boot, our bootstraps. We got here because somebody bent down and helped us pick up our boots. None of us are here, none of us are here on our own. Somebody helped you somewhere, and somebody's gonna continue to help you. When you're in law school, professors, your peers, alumni, people here at this conference, they will help you. Continue to add them to your personal board of directors. Talk to current students, find out what they did right and what they wish they had done better. And then take those things and make sure you don't do them, right? They don't have to be formal mentors that you get. You don't have to go up to someone and go, hi, hi, can you be my mentor? No, that, first of all, is weird. Second of all, <laughs> But you don't have to do that. You can have mentoring relationships with someone without it being called an official mentor. People want to help you. They do. That's why we're all here. Okay? So you make sure that you engage with people, and then when you do, you follow up. I could have a whole other talk about networking and not following up. I won't, but I'm telling you this. Don't reach out to somebody if you're not willing to engage with them. Okay? Be ready. Be prepared, like I said before. Finally, Number 10, build your brand. How many of you have a brand already? Everybody in here has a brand. It may not be the one you want it to be, but you all have a brand. There's what, there's what people say about you when you're not in the room, what people think about you. That's your brand, right? And so you want to make sure your brand is exactly how you want it, okay? I'm going to tell you about that. As a law student, your brand begins with what? Your grades your grades, okay? They're not definitive, but it's helpful when you have good grades to, to build your brand, okay? And then after your grades, you can add to your brand with participation on law review, on new court, and becoming involved in and hopefully becoming a leader of a student group. All those things add to your brand. But there's so many more. Again, you're not getting comfortable. You're always moving, always striving, always achieving. Strive and get merit-based scholarships, right? Try out for writing competitions. Hone your craft. It is a craft. You're learning a craft. Join bar associations. Any of you already a member of a bar association as a pre-law student? I'll tell you a quick story. I met this woman at an event. I used to run an organization for minority law students. I met this woman, and she came up to me, and she says, I was told to come and talk to you um, by the director of the bar association. And I was like, oh, are you an attorney? And she was like, no. I was like, the way you, you need to talk to me about. So she said, 
well, no, I'm a pre-law student and I went to the Bar Association because I figured I want to be around attorneys. So that's, that's what a Bar Association is about. And so I, I went there and they told me that I should reach out to you. So immediately I'm impressed, right? Because of that hustle that we talked about at number one. She was a hustler. She's a partner at a law firm now. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So it's having that vision. I'm talking about having that end goal. You gotta want it. And do, don't get comfortable. Don't be lazy. Own the fact that this is your dream. All right. Lastly, and this is really important, and so you can work on this if you don't have this already. Law school is not a popularity contest, but no one gets really far by just being intelligent and not being likable. People have to like you. If, if I don't like you, I don't want to hang out with you. And in the end, people have to want to like you. So do your best to be likable. <laughs> I don't know how to teach you that, but, but, but do your best. Try to be, be gracious, be respectful, be enthusiastic, be engaging, be likable. As the kid president said, be more awesome. Right? My final <laughs> quote is from Nelson Mandela, who said, there is no passion to be found in playing small in settling for a life that is less than the one you're capable of living. So I look forward to seeing you all in big lives. I want you to stay connected with me. You can find me on Twitter, at Paula Edgar. You can find me on Facebook, at Paula Edgar Fan Page. You can find me on LinkedIn, at Paula Edgar. I expect to hear from all of you. I'm, I'm not, I'm serious. Um, in the meantime, good luck, and welcome to the profession. Thank you.